we're going to get right to it. Uh, actually, before we get to the pictures, um, oftentimes there are a couple paragraphs of information before the actual features. And there might be some stuff in those paragraphs that you have to know for the quiz as well. Okay? Like this week, if you look through the paragraphs here, a bunch of stuff you kind of already know about. Okay, the very first paragraph talks about renewable resources versus non-renewable resources. And you know what those are, right? Renewable resources are things that come back, okay, like maybe a tree growing or water's renewable, things like that. Non-renewable, on the other hand, that's uh, like an example would be fossil fuels, okay? That's our main example. That's actually what we're going to be seeing a lot of in the slideshow is like the mining of fossil fuels, resources, okay? So things like coal petroleum, natural gas, and even mineral deposits like iron. We're going to see the mining of iron in the slideshow too. Iron is a non-renewable resource. Once we dig it all out of earth, like that's all the earth has. It's not going to grow back or come back. That's all we have. Okay, so even minerals are non-renewable resources. For power plants, the thing you have to know is what is the primary emission of a power plant. Okay, primary emission, not talking about like electricity, but I'm talking about that equation right in the paragraph there. It says C plus O2 equals CO2. You got it. Okay, so underline the CO2 part. Put a box around that. Somehow highlight CO2 because the correct answer for what is the primary emission of a power plant would be CO2, carbon dioxide. And that brings us to number two. Okay, for two, you can see that there's both a number and a letter. So all of two, anything that has a two on it, is a type of surface mine. So this is mining from the surface downward. But the, the letter represents a specific type of surface mine, like 2A is strip mining. Okay, and strip mining is a process, kind of what it sounds like, where you're stripping off the upper layers of earth, getting down to the stuff that you're digging for, which in a lot of these cases is coal. Okay, so you can see kind of this brown material on the top, that's just like dirt and soil. But then you can see lots and lots and lots of this dark black stuff that's coal. Uh, this is more examples of strip mining. Pretty destructive to environments, like a lot of mining can be. Um, but again, digging up resources that we currently use a whole lot, like the coal. Okay, what you have to know about drilling and blasting is why would a company choose to drill and blast over a process like strip mining? Okay, and it says it right there. I want you to underline this word for word. Okay, it says this practice greatly conserves energy and equipment that would otherwise be required to strip off the upper layers. Okay, so it greatly conserves energy and equipment. <coughs> and really when we're talking about energy and equipment, that's money. Okay, so it saves time, saves money, saves energy and equipment. To see is mountaintop removal. It's going to show a little animation. We're not going to watch this now, but we'll watch it later in class. But well, this is just going to show the process of mountaintop removal. And again, it's, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's where they kind of, uh, I guess, mine off the top of a mountain. And the excess material that they don't end up using, a lot of times gets dumped into valleys. Okay, so you're removing the top of the mountain and you're depositing it, leaving it in the valley. So you're kind of removing the topography from an area. Okay, oh, this is cool. Open pit mines. Uh, this is an open pit mine, and again, it's, it's just a type of mining. Uh, this, this case where they just mine as deep as they can, following a material, maybe coal, maybe some other valuable material, down as deep into the earth as it goes. <coughs> and that is awesome. Look at that. Isn't that like a perfect circle? It always, it always makes me think of like, I don't know, it was like a laser beam from outer space or something, you know, like, and then like perfect circle. I think it's cool. A lot of times when these uh, mines get all mined out, like everything valuable has been removed, a lot of times they uh, end up as landfills. Number three is just oil rigs, okay? Two different types of oil rigs on the slide here. We just both call them oil rigs on land on the left and then offshore oil platforms are on the right, okay? Uh, we get a whole lot of oil from offshore so sources. All right, in between three and four, there's actually some important information in that small little paragraph. Okay, information like the definition of an ore. Okay, it's already underlined and bolded for you, but I put a star next to that or something. An ore is a rock that contains enough metal to be mined for a profit. Uh, the other part in that paragraph that's important, 
are those three bolded words, mining, refining, and manufacturing. Okay, expect to see that on the quiz as like a fill in the blank, like fill in the missing step type of question. Okay, so again, there's going to be some repeat, at least here, where there's drilling and blasting again. Okay, the reason there's this repetition is because now we're looking at those steps of mining, refining, manufacturing. And drilling and blasting often is the first step in the mining process. Okay, so this is part of the mining process because the next step, if the stuff is too big, is crushing, where they actually have to take this blown up material and crush it even smaller so they then can transport it to a refinery. Okay, so that's why the smaller the pieces, the better. Okay, grinding is the first step in the refining process. So this happens at a refinery. <coughs> and what we're looking at here, these big cylinders, okay, you can see in the picture on the left, these little knobs. Each one of those little knobs is like a steel rod that cuts through the middle, okay? And they put a bunch of those crushed up pieces of rock in there. And then they spin the cylinder. And the rocks are bumping against each other. They're bumping against those steel rods. And it grinds it, crushes it down to a powder. So that's the goal of the grinding process, is to get all of the stuff that you took from the mine to be a powder. Then the next thing, iron separation, you have to separate the stuff you want from the stuff you don't want. And there's different methods of separating iron out from like the other materials. Uh, one way is with magnets, right? Like iron's magnetic. So you can literally pull the iron out of these rocks, out of this, this grinded up powder. You can pull it out with a magnet. But most often they use like a liquid separation. Okay, and that's just using density differences to separate out the stuff you want, which is more dense, the iron, from all the other stuff that is less dense than iron. So it, it can be removed using liquid. So what they do next is they, it's called pellet formation, but really we're going to identify this slide as taconite. You see how it, where it says taconite? I would scribble everything else out on that line except for taconite. Okay, because when you see this on the quiz, the correct answer for identification is taconite. And there's actually two things you have to know about taconite. First of all, what's taconite made out of? Like we know it's made out of iron because we're talking about iron here, but what's the other material? Clay, we got it, clay. A couple people I think I heard clay, clay. You got it. So they mix iron and clay together and they make these tiny little pellets. Why would they do that? We just went through this whole big process of separating the iron out. Why would they then mix it immediately with clay? What would be the benefit? Again, it says it right there. Keep reading. You got it. Perfect. Okay. Transportation. Is that what we found too? Yeah, transportation. So I would underline or circle where it talks about transportation in that paragraph also. Okay, because again, if you just think about what that would look like, you separate all this iron, it's kind of this sludge, wet iron material, and a lot of this stuff is still transported in trains. Fill up a train car with this sludge-like material, is that going to be easy to move around? It's going to be moving back and forth, every little start and stop, it's going to be awful. Okay, but think about a train car full of taconite. That's a lot easier to transport, a lot easier to handle, okay? And then our last step here is part of the manufacturing process. And that's finally, you're right, this is when we get that like big furnace, okay? This is the steel mill. So those train cars full of taconite, they pull up to a, a steel mill and they just dump all those pellets out. And those pellets made of iron and clay, the clay and iron have drastically different melting temperatures. So when they heat it up, the iron can melt away and it's removed from the clay and now you have a whole bunch of molten iron which then they add in a bunch of other different metals you can see a bunch of them listed there and depending on the types of metals you add you end up creating different types of steel okay so you start with iron you add in some other stuff and then you have steel and that steel can be used for you know a whole bunch of things right like the desks you're sitting in um, all of the steel beams that hold up our roof and that you see like in the construction between the buildings. A whole bunch of different purposes for all of this steel. And, and it all came from inside the earth. It all came from drilling and blasting and grinding and crushing and all of those steps. So if you think about all of the stuff that you interact with, all of the materials, all, all the things, your refrigerator door, uh, like the bus, your, the car that you rode here, and all of that stuff was made in these steps. Isn't that kind of cool to think about? 
Like all of the different things made from metal, they all went through this. And, and I think that's kind of cool. Not a lot of people think about that too much when they, I don't know, yeah, open the car door, sit in the car, like drive, like any of that stuff. It kind of goes over our head. We don't think about it much, but all of, like every material that we use throughout the day made out of metal of some kind, this is how we got it, okay? I think it's really cool to think about that for a little bit.